Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to execute a file in Linux. So, um, yeah, I, I have a few things to cover in my document here, but I'm just going to show you real quick how this can be done. So we're in a directory called test, and uh, I have test1 and test2, two scripts I'd like to execute, and this works the same if it's a binary file. So first one, if you want to execute something in your in the directory that you're in just say dot to f refer to the current directory and run a slash and then the file name so test one this is going to refer to the script test one in the current directory so hit enter and it's running and there we go it executed the script now let's try the same thing with test two the script now this is going to fail see it says permission denied and if you wonder why that is um we, we can look at these files and notice that no, notice here that um, test one is executable and test two is not and you can tell offhand because this is highlighted a little bit in bash but you you might not be using the same or or in the it's it, that's really a feature of this uh, well one, one way or another you might not have that in whatever shell you're using whether that's a bash feature or a console feature but any case you can see the reason for that you, you don't you don't actually have to look at the highlighting look at the permissions over here notice this first one has execute permissions for the user now the way permissions work real quick just the basics we have these first three bits are permissions for the the owner of the file then these are for the group of the file and then these are for all other users on the system so r is for read w is for write and x is for execute so here we see we have read write execute permissions for the for the owner and we have read and write permissions for the group and we only have read permissions for everyone else now notice this file down here test2 has no execute permissions for anyone so we can fix that by saying chmod or chmod if you, if you want to call it that and you say u for user that would be the owner plus x so, and then we're going to do test2.sh now we've just granted execute permissions to the owner of this script so let's run ls-l again and notice we now have an x or execute permissions for the owner of this file now so now if we try to run test2 it's going to succeed and it runs just the same as test1 did so that's how you can grant permission to do that um, so that's how you can execute a file um, so this was uh, this is just executing a bash script now here are some chmod examples. You can add ex execute permission to. Uh, oh, you're also going to need read permission. So you can ex so if you want to add it, add this permission for the owner of the file. You can do it like that for the group, and for everyone. So um, let's say if we wanted to grant everyone perm. Well, first let's let's try removing read permission and just see what happens if we do that. Remove read permission, and let's see if we can still execute this permission denied that's kind of interesting so notice that the owner has write and execute permission but no read permission so you have permission to execute but if you can't even read the file you can't execute it so if you re if you add read permission back you will now be able to so notice it's a you in the chmod command you specify the user the u for user or you could use g for group and a plus will add a permission a minus will remove a permission so plus r adds read permission minus r removes read permission right so um we now have permission to read and execute on this file so it now works just fine we can execute that file so that's that's um so that that's all great and everything. Um, is there anything? You know what? Let's just try it giving everyone permission. So say if you want to just give everyone permission to this. UGO. All right. So that will give. Am I not looking at this right? UG. Oh, well, I'm just adding read permission for everything.
So there you go, adding permission for everyone. Now we could remove permission for everyone. You notice nobody has any permission to do anything. And note that um, A would be an invalid option here. You need an O for everyone. Oops, notice that an A is a valid option here. Let's try removing. So we can remove permission for everyone and we can add permission for everyone. Now let's see how that works if we just say A. So we can remove it and add it back. And there we go. So A will, so you, you could, if you want to refer to everyone individually, if you want just the user, it's you. Group is G. O is other. That's everyone else who's not the user in the group. Now, if you want the, you, you can specify this like U, G, O for user group other, or you can just say A. To, to refer to all three of those user group other. So yeah, ju just to get that um, straightened out and correct, um, kind of fumbled over that for a second, but that's pretty much all you would want to know about permissions. I mean, there are, uh, you, you can get into ACLs and stuff that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. Um, let's talk about, um, oh, another thing worth mentioning. Um, let, let's say if you, let's create a new file. Um, or you know, let's just remove permissions. Let's remove permissions, and we're going to add for the user. We're going to add read-write permissions, right? So, read-write permissions. Now, if you try to execute test two, it won't work, right? Now there's another way to execute this with, without it being executable. Since this is a bash script, you could just specify bash. You could specify the bash command for the bash prompt and use the script as a parameter and it will then execute the script just fine even without execute permissions. So that's one way around that. Now if you didn't have read permissions, you couldn't read it. Basically if you give someone read permissions on your scripts, they can execute them. Or they could copy them and create their, their own script and execute that. So anyways, just worth being aware of. Um, also, if you want to execute, say, a Python script, one more example to cover. Let's create a quick Python script. vi test1.py and print test. All right, simplest Python script we could possibly come up with. Python, there we go. We have executed a Python script. Now, if you had a binary, it would be the exact same thing too. You, you would treat it the same as that script if you had like a, you know, let's say if you had a binary file like test.bin, you would say test.bin to execute it. Now this is not a binary file, just wanted to give you an example of the syntax, but that's how you do it if you had a binary executable, just to be aware of that. So hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting, if nothing else, you might want to give me a thumbs up. Um, you might want to hit that subscribe button also and uh, hit the little bell icon up. Otherwise, uh, YouTube's probably not going to let you know when we come out with a new video. Um, we do have a lot of great stuff coming up and, and we've actually, if you want to check our list of videos, we've already put out a lot of uh, pretty interesting things, some more interesting than others. Um, we cover a lot of great stuff, um, coding, servers, hardware, software, 3D printing, electronics, uh, single board computers, robots, networking all sorts of great tech related stuff that you're not gonna wanna miss. So if you, if you want your YouTube feed to uh, you know, be that much more interesting, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button. But more important than any of that stuff, you're gonna wanna leave a comment down below, especially if you know something that I don't know. Um, definitely let me know, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video and reads the comments. Um, leave a comment that for them also. Any, any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you wanna say, I probably wanna hear it. So do leave a comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So 
as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.